What's going on everyone? It's Alex Goddard here back again with another Premier League catch-up show. The Premier League catch-up show is back on the channel. But yes, yeah, still, there is only one more week left of the Premier League. You know what? Sometimes I hate the end of the season because there's going to be no more football until August. So, you know what? I do feel quite sad that it's ending, but... We do have Premier League champions as Manchester City, but also we do have the first team to be relegated this season, and that is Stoke City. To be fair, I saw it coming. I thought Stoke had been absolutely terrible this season, and rightly so, they deserve to go down, because they're not the team that I thought they were going to be this season. I thought they were going to be very consistent throughout the num position 11 for 12, perhaps. But no, they are absolutely dreadful this season, and I think... You know, players like Peter Crouch, Shakiri, and Jack Bullen might move on to other clubs, but Stoke are the first team to be relegated from this Premier League season. But who else will be relegated? Will it be West Brom? Will it be Southampton, Swansea, or Huddersfield? Well, you know what? There's only one more week left to determine who will be relegated from this Premier League season. But also, the fight for top four is also one because Chelsea, Tottenham and Liverpool could be in the race for top four. However, United, we've declared second place for sure. However, before we get started, I want to send my commiserations to Sir Alex Ferguson, Manchester United manager, who unfortunately on Saturday went into hospital with a brain stroke. And I never saw this coming. I thought... By this news, I thought Alex Ferguson was going to die, but thank goodness he's pulled through. He is talking, he is breathing, and he's recovering really, really well. So, hope you get well, Fergie. Please stay strong. Please stay strong. And also, I want to send my best congratulations to the teams within the Northwest, especially special mentions to Rochdale, who survived relegation on Saturday, but also to another club called Bolton Wondrous, who, which is only a 30-minute drive away from my place. And I went to um, round near Bolton, near the Macron Stadium, and when I went back home, I saw many Bolton fans cheering and just celebrating because Bolton Wanderers stayed up in a dramatic 3-2 victory against Nottingham Forest, which meant that Burton, Barnsley and Sunderland would be relegated from the Championship and Bolton survived the ultimate of survivals in the Championship. And I'm really happy because my friend is a Bolton fan and I was cheering Bolton on all the time throughout Sunday and it was a really really great day for Bolton fans and they absolutely deserve it and I just hope next season they won't get into that position again because I think that Bolton they are a really really good team and I would definitely support them because just as a United fan I just support all of the teams throughout the North West teams like Burnley, Rochdale, Wigan and even Bolton those are the teams I have to support because I am a really good supporter. Although all of those lower teams who haven't been doing very, very well and haven't been getting grinding results. But Rochdale and Bolton, those are the teams that I really support. And you know what? Supporting the North West is what I do. As long with Manchester United though, but... <sighs> Manchester United though. One week winning against Arsenal in a dramatic fashion with a Marwan Fellaini 2 win. Late winner to give Manchester United the three points last week. But then this week, really? You know what, Manchester United are very inconsistent. They are very inconsistent. Because Manchester United have lost 1-0 to Brighton away from home. Like, I don't understand. That's now three times we have lost to all of the newly promoted teams this season away from home. We've lost to Huddersfield away in October, we lost against Newcastle away in February, and now we've lost to Brighton away in May. Like, really? We are like the only team who have lost to Newcastle, Huddersfield, and Brighton this season. All of the other top teams have beaten all of those other promoted teams away from home, but us, we can't even beat them away from home. Like, it's just embarrassing. Like, there was no leaders in that team on Friday. And the thing is, this is the reason why Manchester United don't play on a Friday night. Because there is so much expectations. And Brighton going into this game, they thought they were 
going to be absolutely ripped to shreds here. But no, they went at us like we were roast dinner and Brighton were the gravy. They were all over us. Like, Manchester United show some real effort. Although we don't have a thing to play for now, we're just waiting for the FA Cup to come around. But no, you've got to stop teams from beating you. Because teams like Brighton, they're going to survive now and they are safe in this Premier League season. They are now safe for another season. Which, to be fair, we gave Newcastle United, when we lost against them, look where they are now. They're safe. So literally every single team who has won against us has survived this season. I mean, really. If it's an important victory like Manchester United, then teams can say to themselves, we've been Manchester United, we can survive this season. And you never know, Huddersfield might survive too. Even from that dramatic 0-0 win for them, it kind of feels like a draw. But since they drew to Manchester City at home, when Manchester City were obviously going to lift up the Premier League title, but Huddersfield, they played really, really well. They defended really well in order to get that all-important point against Manchester City. It was really, really crucial for Huddersfield to defend really well against Manchester City because you never know, that could be the only point that they could get from these last remaining games. They've also got Chelsea away and they've got Arsenal at home, which maybe they could get a win. But thing is, I would have to say that Huddersfield are more likely to go down maybe with Swansea, but still, it's either between West Brom, Southampton, Huddersfield or Swansea. And there is a game on tonight, or if this video is uploaded by Wednesday, on Tuesday, Swansea versus Southampton. It's a huge, huge game, which might determine who will stay up, Swansea or Southampton. It will just depend on the amount of effort and how much these players want to, to survive this season. Because right now, I know Bryson have survived, Watford have survived through that 2-1 victory against Newcastle. They finally won a Premier League game after so long. But yes, they are now safe in this season, along with Bournemouth, who won against Swansea 1-0. And also, I have to say that... West Brom though, West Brom, winning 1-0 against Spurs. I love the Premier League. I love it how you can get Premier League matches where you think West Brom versus Spurs. You think to yourself, my money's on Spurs to win this thing a 5-0. But you did not expect West Brom to come out with the all-important three points to keep their season alive. How the hell did Darren Moore keep West Brom in the game? Like, how? I even saw his reaction. He wasn't jumping up for joy. He was standing on one leg and he was just like, you know, completely still. He didn't show any emotion when Jake Livermore scored that last minute winner. He was like, completely still. But I bet you, through his head right now, he's jumping up for joy. But West Brom, they are still in it. I never thought West Bromwich Albion could be staying up. But you know what? If they win against... Who else are they facing? They're facing Crystal Palace, who, unfortunately, relegated Stoke. If they beat Crystal Palace on the last day of the season, and if Southampton lose against Manchester City, and if Stoke loses against Swansea, then West Brom will survive this season. You know what? It could happen. But West Brom, though, ever since Darren Moore took over from West Brom, my word, Pardew hasn't even got a victory. I mean, he only got that one victory, and that was against West, um, against, um, which, which team was it? Which team was it? Brighton of Albion. Yes, that was his only Premier League victory as West Bromwich Albion manager. But no, Darren Moore, wow, what a manager he is. If he started at the start of the season, West Brom wouldn't even be in the relegation zone, beating Manchester United, Newcastle, drawing to Liverpool, and now being Spurs. Bloody hell. I mean, absolutely grinding results from West Brom. And you know what? This actually means a little bit of trouble for Spurs because if Spurs lose all of their remaining games and if Chelsea keep on winning, then Chelsea might overtake Tottenham in the race for top four. And you never know. This is the time of season where Spurs can bottle it. They did it last time when they were trying to win the league against Leicester. They bottled it when they were trying to win the league against Chelsea. But you never know, they could miss out on top four when they actually lose to Chelsea. You know what? This is the season, the time of season, where 
Tottenham Hotspur, Bossel, every single opportunity for either top four space or the winning the Premier League. They always bottle it when it comes to the beginning of May or towards the end of May. They always bottle it. So could Newcastle get a really good result against Tottenham? And can Tottenham beat Leicester on the final day of the season? Could Spurs get top four? You know what? My money's on Chelsea could maybe nick it. But then again, you do have Liverpool who have got themselves into a Champions League final against Real Madrid, who unfortunately lost 1-0 against Chelsea, which means Chelsea would definitely be on form. But Liverpool, they're not too concerned about the Premier League. They are morally focused about beating Real Madrid in the Champions League. You know what? My money's on Liverpool to win the Champions League. Although I'm a Red Devil and I should hate Liverpool right now, but you know what? I'm sick and tired of Real Madrid winning the Champions League all the time. But you know what? I think Liverpool really deserve it. And Cristiano Ronaldo needs to watch out for Mo Salah because I bet you in that final, Mo Salah is going to rip Real Madrid to shreds. Honestly, I'm really excited for that final. But also, speaking of finals, Manchester United versus Chelsea. You know what? Who will win the FA Cup? Now, both teams, Manchester United and Chelsea, will desperately need to win this FA Cup because otherwise, if we don't win this FA Cup, then our season could be a disappointment. For Chelsea's season, it could be a real disappointment if they don't win the FA Cup. But you know what? If we win it, then we'll do it for Fergie. We'll win it for Fergie. Since now, he's recovering quite well and he's recovering. So best of luck to Alex Ferguson. I hope he gets well soon and hope we win the FA Cup at the end of the season. But you know what? Our last remaining games, West Ham and Watford, hopefully we win those games and we'll be on form, ready for the FA Cup. It's a bit sad that Arsenal lost against Atletico Madrid and now they can't really have a Europa League final. Just have Arsene Wenger a send-off like he should have done. But you know what? That victory against Burnley, 5-0 battering from Arsenal. It was an amazing day, a memorable day for Arsene Wenger. Mercy, Arsenal. The thing is, Arsene Wenger, he, he, he's a great manager. I can't lie. He is one of the greatest managers of all time. And you know what? That match was a day to remember for Arsenal fans, a day to remember to Arsene Wenger. And you know what? It was a fantastic day overall for Arsene Wenger. And all these other games that happened during the week, Leicester losing to West Ham, which means they're safe in the Premier League season. And you know what? This Premier League season has been crazy. We've had so many mental results, like West Brom winning against Tottenham Hotspur, Manchester United winning against Manchester City. Manchester City losing against Liverpool and all these crazy results. It's been, a, it's been an amazing Premier League season and I cannot wait to do a, an entire review of this Premier League season. So that's possibly going to be coming in the next week or two. But then again, I will be back with my Doctor Who reviews. I did take a week off just because it has been really, really hot outside. I've just been enjoying the weather. I've just been focusing on my work because May is the season where... Everyone's focusing on exams and everyone's got, you know, really important coursework to finish off. And it's all about trying to finish off, you know, any college work or anything like that. I mean, I've got no exams whatsoever, but I do have a final project to do at the end of the year. But the thing is, May is always a difficult time for us people because we are trying to focus so much on exams that YouTube kind of becomes oblivious, if you know what I mean. But also the Game Addicts as well. We haven't been doing any videos for the Game Addicts, but we need to very, very soon. But I'll be back with my Doctor Who reviews, of course. And after when this Premier League season finishes, I'll be doing Doctor Who videos all day long. Until the Premier League returns, please comment down below if you really want me to continue this Premier League catch-up show. If that's what you really want, though. But if you don't want me to, then that's fine. I'll just completely just talk about it in my own time or possibly mention it in another video but you know what it's been fun doing this Premier League catch-up show and I cannot wait for next week where I'll be doing my final Premier League catch-up show of the season and my season review of 2017 to 2018 and I'll see you guys next time until then guys take care of yourselves goodbye